All right, welcome to our video today on Thursday, June the 4th. I'm glad you're tuning in. I hope you have enjoyed by this point yesterday's video, which was the beginning of round three. So I have an update for you on that video. Please remember in the third round, the winners of these videos advance to the final four. We are getting so close to the end of this tournament and I think we can sense it, we can feel it, and it's exciting to see uh, who will win, who will be, as we are calling it, the most inspirational disciple, at least to all of us who have participated in this tournament, okay? So, to update the video of yesterday, folks, there's still time to vote. Please cast your vote, but currently Luke, the beloved physician, has 75% of the votes, and Timothy, uh, the son in the faith of the Apostle Paul, has 25%. Folks, there's still plenty of time, uh, and we will see when all the votes are tallied. It would not surprise me if it totally switches. And we've seen that happen in this tournament. Someone with a big lead, and then it narrows down quickly. So we will see. One of them will advance to the final four. We'll have another person in the final four from today's video. We will be looking today at Barnabas from the Book of Acts and Peter the Apostle. So I'd like to show you where we are right now in the tournament. What we're going to be doing today is we are looking in Region 2. Folks, we are now down to the final two people of Region 2. We are looking at Peter and Barnabas. Tomorrow's video, which will be Friday, we will see the final of Region 3, which will be the Sons of Thunder, as they are called in the Bible, James and John the brothers. That'll be a very exciting video tomorrow. Just so everyone understands, the way this works is the winner of today's video and the winner of tomorrow's video will be paired up in the final four. One more way to put it in perspective for you is this. If you're wondering right now who will be in the championship, one of these four names will be in the championship. Who will it be? Peter, Barnabas, James, or John? This is going to be tough, but let's get started with today's video. We're going to begin with Barnabas. <clears throat> with Barnabas. Okay? And if you'll give me just a moment, I'm going to get my uh, paper ready. I should have had that ready before this. There we go. Now, Barnabas. Who is Barnabas? Well, if you remember, that isn't even his real name, okay? That is a nickname given to him. Why? Because he had a name. I'm not even going to say the name because I don't want any confusion at this point. Because his real name, uh, there's like 10 of them in the Bible. So I'm just going to continue to call him Barnabas. But what is his personality? Well, we know his personality by the nickname he has. There's a reason he was given that nickname. And we see his personality over and over and over again in the book of Acts. And that personality is that he was a comforter. Okay, why do I say that? Well, if you remember, the name Barnabas means the son of consolation. Okay, as you know, folks, the name consolation means to console someone, to comfort them. You can just imagine someone that has gone through a tragedy. 
maybe the loss of a loved one, or maybe they're just very sad over something. Barnabas, it was just in his nature to be a tender, consoler, or comforter person. Okay? Folks, I, I don't want to sway you either way in today's video. I never want to do that. But I just want you to realize we have two totally different type of men in today's video. And you'll see the difference when we get to Peter. <clears throat> so far, who has Barnabas... <clears throat> uh, uh, ha uh, who has he got victories over so far? Well, in the first round, uh, he beat one of the twelve apostles named James, the son of Alphaeus. Okay, that was his first round victory. His second round victory, <clears throat> he he won over a man named Philip the Evangelist. Okay, so that's been his two victories so far. Now, for Barnabas, in what way did he impact other people? Okay, you probably remember this from yesterday. When I say impact other people, I'm not necessarily looking for some big event, some big doing, like a part of a resume. I just want to know how did he impact other people, okay? And we can learn this by looking at the personality. Let me give you one of the examples of him comforting someone. And this is going to be my answer right here. Over and over, Barnabas appears in the book of Acts comforting someone. But do you remember the story? We've talked about it a lot in this tournament of Paul and Barnabas. And they had a, a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A disagreement. It wasn't a fight. They did, I don't think they yelled at each other and fought it out, okay? They disagreed on who they were going to take with them on their second missionary journey. Because on their first missionary journey, a young man named Mark had left their team. We've talked about this. Folks, I personally feel Mark had a reason for doing it. I don't think he just quit because he didn't want to do it anymore. I personally think myself that he left because there was maybe an ill loved one or something valid. Paul did not want to bring Mark back on the second journey. Mark wanted to return to the team, but Paul said, we, we can't do that. We need someone that we can depend on that will not leave us. Barnabas being the consoler, the son of consolation, the comforter of others, he said, I think we should bring Mark back. You see what I'm saying, folks? That is one example of Barnabas, okay? Folks, I want to tell you there are things I love about Barnabas. There are things I love about Peter. But I love the fact that this was his nature Okay, he was one of those kind of men. So how did he impact others? Well, I'm going to describe it as he was a mender of hearts. Okay, a mender, which means to repair, to fix a broken heart or a saddened heart. He just couldn't help it. It was who he was as a person. You see, folks, that's why I said this question is more on a personal level, not necessarily a ministry level. But now let's look at a ministry level. Okay, now we're going to shift to what, the, the, folks, I'm going to go ahead and say it. This is kind of their resume. What did they do? What successes did they have? 
please listen, folks, very carefully to number one. In the book of Acts, we've talked about this several times. There were three missionary journeys. The, this wasn't a little trip that took a week or two. These missionary journeys lasted years, some two or three years long. They would go to country after country after country, establishing churches, reaching out and, and trying to get the lost saved. If you ask most Christians who led those missionary journeys, most people will say it was the Apostle Paul. That's the common answer. I'm going to tell you, folks, that answer, in a way, is not correct. Okay? Paul was a co-leader of those journeys. Okay? And what I mean by that, let's imagine there's someone who owns a business, but yet they're partners. Okay? Co-ownership, 50-50. You see what I'm saying? Barnabas, if you read Acts chapter 13, when God first told Paul that I want you to leave and become this great missionary, God did not say, Paul, you leave and bring Barnabas and he'll help you. God said, separate me, Barnabas and Paul for the work that I have called them to. Did you hear that? Do you know that God called them together? Okay? By the way, just a little extra piece of information here. When Paul first got saved, nobody trusted him. Nobody believed, not even the 12 apostles. They thought he's tricking us. He's going he's gonna to come in and then he's going to kill us all. Because Paul was a horrible man before he got saved. Guess who the one man was that believed in Paul and saw the genuineness in him? It may have been someone who liked comforting and consoling and fixing things. Barnabas is to be thanked for the ministry of Paul. Okay? So... Success number one, I'm going to word this very carefully. He was a co-partner with Paul. On those missionary journeys. But now, folks, number two. This is another thing a lot of folks do not realize. When Paul and Barnabas had their disagreement, they split their ways. I think they agreed to disagree with each other. Paul got a new partner. His name was Silas. And they went on a, on a missionary journey. Barnabas, though, went his way. Guess who he took with him? It was the young man that wanted to work, who had left the journey prior, Mark. They went and had an incredible missionary journey themselves, okay? Now, so I'm going to write that as success number two. Not only was he a co-partner with Paul, but he was the leader of his own missionary journey. And that was with Mark. Okay. Now, last of all, and this is something that amazes me, folks. In the early part of the book of Acts, please listen very, very carefully. In the early part of the book of Acts, Barnabas, this is way before even the Apostle Paul was saved, Barnabas had a lot of land that he lived on. But he knew in his heart God was calling him to go out to the world. And folks, 
He did something most people would never think of. Barnabas sold his land, his home, his land, his everything he had. And do you know what he did with the money? Well, he didn't take it and fund his missionary journeys. No, he did that by faith. He took all the money he got. He brought it to the 12 apostles. And he said, here is some money for the distribution of the gospel. Folks, if you can't see that comforter, that consoler, that, that beautiful heart that Barnabas had, that I'm not sure what to say. But I'm going to say that that was his third biggest success was that he sold his land for the gospel. Okay? And what I mean by that is he sold the land, brought it to the apostles, the money, and said, use this and however we need to use it to get the gospel to the world. Wow. Okay. So now let's move on to the Apostle Peter. I think we all know about Peter, don't we? I mean, from the, from the word go in the New Testament, Peter, we see him doing incredible things now what was his personality now folks i told you all ago you there is a big difference in these two men okay oh they believed the same amen they 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 were just like that as far as their beliefs but their style of ministry their personalities is a lot different okay peter i best describe him as a leader okay as a leader as you know and we'll talk about this in a moment peter was a leader his whole life okay now that's an incredible thing but what i want to say something about this personality though do you remember how many times peter especially in the Gospels, when something needed to happen, when no one else would speak up, Peter was the one who volunteered and did it. I mean, when Jesus was walking on the sea, Peter was the only one that got out and went walking. I mean, he was just, he was just a very fast-paced kind of guy. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he pulled a sword out and he cut a man's ear off. Okay, he did that because he was defending Jesus. But that shows you his personality. He would be, if they were alive today, and they were standing behind a pulpit in a church, Peter would be the kind of preacher who would be very strong, probably maybe would run around when he preached and, and, and hit the pulpit. He would be that kind, kind of like a John the Baptist. Barnabas would be more of the, not that it's any less stern of a preacher, but, but he would be more of the, softer words, more of the comforter as he spoke. Okay? Who has Peter had victories over so far? Well, here they are. In the first round, he had a victory over Philemon. Okay? Remember Philemon? There's a book by his name in the New Testament. Then he had a victory in the second round over Mark. Okay? The same guy that we were talking about over here, okay? He had a victory over Mark. By the way, he actually barely pulled off that victory over Mark. That was super close in the voting. <clears throat> now, in what way did Peter best impact others well I got to thinking about this please give me a moment to explain do you remember yesterday's video remember Timothy okay do you remember what I said about Timothy that if you take the first century 
folks, that was the beginning of the church. If you divide the first century in half, you would have the year 1 through the year 50. Then the second half, you'd have the year 50 through 100. Folks, there are some people who were the lead voices, the big, big leaders in the first half. But then in the second half of the first century, some of them had died. You had new leaders like Timothy was. Peter, there is no doubt, was one of the lead voices, if not the lead voice, the number one lead voice in the first half of the first century. The early church in its, in its first days was led by Peter and a few other men. So I think that was his biggest impact was he was a lead voice in the early church. In other words, everyone valued his opinion and a lot of things that he said people did it because of the respect they had for him. Now, <clears throat> very quickly here, what are the three biggest successes of his life? Well, folks, let me tell you, Peter is one of those guys. This list could go, <laughs> uh, it would be very big, what all he did. But here's what the three biggest things I think he did. Number one, he was the leader of the 12 apostles. Okay. When I say 12 apostles, I'm referring to the original 12, the ones that Jesus handpicked, Peter, James, John, all those guys, Matthew, Thomas, Bartholomew. Peter was the leader of those of that group. Success number two, what was the next biggest thing he did? Well, I think it comes in the book of Acts chapter 2, and it was the day that God sent the Holy Spirit down to the church and filled the believers. It's known as the day of Pentecost. By the way, the word Pentecost means 50th day of the Passover. It was a festival. On that day, how many was it? I think 2,000 or 3,000 people, I can't remember, got saved on that day. And one day, Peter was the one, the one man. That's why I say he was like the lead voice of the early church. That day, who was the one man who spoke? You could call it the grand opening of the church. You ever seen a business have a grand opening? I think that day was the grand opening of the church, so to speak. Peter spoke. He preached on that day, okay? So he preached on the day of Pentecost. You can read about that in Acts chapter 2. Thousands got saved on that day. Now, success number three. We'll end our video right after this. If you look at the New Testament, you'll find two books that are called 1 Peter and 2 Peter. Those are two letters that he wrote later in his life before he died and it has some wonderful things in those letters. God used those letters to become a part of the Bible. Okay? So number three, he was the writer of two Bible books. Okay? Now, so we have a decision to make, folks. You've now heard the story of Barnabas. 
you've now heard the story of Peter. There are two totally different types of men. Both did wonderful, incredible things. <clears throat> There's one thing I have on my mind I'd like to say real quick. You see how Peter wrote two Bible books? There's a book in the New Testament called Hebrews. Everybody ever, you ever read Hebrews? Okay. We really don't know who wrote that book. Okay. Some people say Paul wrote it. And if he did, that would make 14 books. Now, I personally don't think it was Paul. The reason is, if you read Hebrews, it does not sound like Paul's other 13 books. The wording's different. It just looks different. Some historical writings claim that Barnabas was the writer of the book of Hebrews. I do not know that, but anyway. So folks, here we are. Who will we vote for? Are we going to write for, uh, vote for the comforter Barnabas, the consoler, the mender of hearts, or for the leader, the early church's number one voice, Peter? Who inspires you the most? Please cast your votes and we will be seeing you on tomorrow, on Friday, for the video of the Sons of Thunder. So I hope you get ready for that one. Please cast your votes. Have a great day. God bless you.